Welcome back all of your grade 12. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I hope that you guys are amped up as much as we are. I am still Ulunile. Don't forget, we are on Facebook. That is where you can simply find us. Let us know anything that you guys want us to assist you with. Trust me, we will try by all means to assist you. That is www.facebook.com forward slash mindset TV. There's so much to do, so little time because the exams are just around the corner. So my time is up to talk. I'm going to hand over to Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're now jumping to paper two. We're looking at some chemistry. And actually, we're doing some organic, which is really good. So, Satombe. So, so Did I say that right? Satombe. So Don't know. Satombe. So Satombe. So Sorry, I'm learning. Okay. <laughs> Languages were not my good student. See, I can't even speak English at the moment. Anyway, so, Satombe, so you sent us some really nice questions. And what I like about what you've sent us, uh, Sweet Pea, is that these questions deal with stuff that you guys tend to not spend a lot of time on when it comes to the organic, all right? So you spend a lot of time on making sure you can name and you can draw and all of those sort of things, which is great. And you maybe spend some time going through what the different types of reactions are and that sort of thing, but you forget about the conditions. Now, you must learn the conditions and why we do it the way we do it, okay? Because those are the little questions that tend to bring your marks down, but they're considered level one questions, grade 12, so they're considered easy. So when your examiner puts those questions in, they're not trying to trick you, they're actually trying to give you marks. But you find them difficult because you go, ah, don't know what to do, but you must learn it. Okay, this is pure, pure learn work. Okay, now, you asked us, Tombi, and you said, can you please assist? Absolutely. The reaction conditions for hydrohalogenation states that no water must be pre present. Can you please explain why? With pleasure. Okay, I'm going to just do it at the bottom here. because, And I'll come to your second question in a moment. So, remember, if I'm telling you that we're doing hydrohalogenation, okay, it means that I'm adding in a hydrogen, and I'm adding in a halogen, which we're going to call X, okay? So that means I've got to be using a hydrogen halide. The only way I can ha add in a hydrogen and a halogen to atoms is if I'm having, if I'm going to be t using, doing an addition reaction, okay? So that means I have to start with something that is unsaturated, Okay, so I have to start with an alkene or an alkyne. Let's start with ethene. It's the easiest. Okay, I'm not going to get too complicated here. So if I had ethene, okay, and now I want to add in a hydrogen and a halogen. Okay, so now I'm going to add in HX. Okay, now what I want to happen is I want this double bond to break and in place of that double bond I want to put a hydrogen and a halogen okay so what I want to happen is I want this compound to turn into this so that double bond breaks and we have hydrogen go to the one and that one already had a hydrogen and we have the halogen go to the other now the problem here is if I have water present, okay, so say there's water in my system. Now remember, water breaks up to H and OH essentially when it comes to my organic chemistry. What will happen is because of the nature of the OH atom, uh, atom ion, okay, instead of the halogen going onto that carbon, the OH will go onto it. So instead of creating a halo alkane, okay, I'll create an alcohol. So this react, this will actually change to this. And that's not hydrohalogenation because I don't have a halogen at the end. That's a problem for us, okay? That's why. It can't, it can't be done in the presence of water. So often with the hydrogen halide, we'll dissolve in ethanol, okay, or something like that. We can't have any water in the system. Otherwise, my halogen will be replaced with a OH, and that's a problem. 
Okay, so the con why do we need to have, why mustn't there be water present? To promote the hydrohalogenation, to make sure the halogen gets ad added to the organic compound and not the OH, to create the haloalkane instead of an alcohol. Okay, that's really important. All right, so now a learner is given butan 2 ol concentrated sulfuric acid, and Cl2 gas. Explain how the learner could use these chemicals to produce 2,3-dichlorobutane. So, let's do this step by step. This is such a nice question, okay? So, they said to us we were given butan 2 ol So, if we draw butan 2 ol butan 2 ol means that the OH is on, let's just see, uh, yes, butan 2 ol the OH is on that one, so there we go, okay, it's always easier if it's drawn, okay, then they told us we were given Cl2, and we were given H2SO4, which was concentrated, okay, and then they tell me, if we go back here, that it creates 2,3-dichlorobutane. So this, okay, becomes, oh, that's not butanol, that's horrific, that's propanol. Oh, that's terrible. Somebody's screaming at the TV right now, going, hmm, there we go. Now that we've got butanol drawn properly, but means four, okay, remember, I had drawn propanol because I only had three, so let's just do that so we don't get confused, okay, so this becomes two, three, so dichloro, so we have a chlorine, and normally we draw it up and down, so this becomes the next one, all right, so Alrighty, so now we look at this and we go, okay, so I had butan 2 ol concentrated sulfuric acid, creates 2,3-dichlorobutanol, okay, so now we look at this and we go, okay, what have we actually done? Well, we've done a substitution reaction, okay, because what's happened here is an OH, and I didn't mean to use that one, but we'll just go with it, and an H have been substituted with the Cl. Now, I have a bit of a problem with the fact that they said it was concentrated sulfuric acid, but that's okay. We can use it for now. It's all right. This is a substitution reaction. So what? in order to do this, we're going to add, okay, so we're going to take the butanol, okay, so we would take the butan to all, we're going to add the chlorine gas to it to give us the 2,3-dichlorobutane. Okay, what do we do with the sulfuric acid? It's a catalyst. Okay, it's a catalyst. So we're using the concentrated sulfuric acid, but with this type of reaction, because it's substitution, this wouldn't be very concentrated. Okay, it would actually need to be quite dilute, but it's, <laughs> no, I'm getting confused. No, concentrated is fine. The sulfuric acid is a catalyst. It's simply there to help the reaction happen. If we left it and we waited and we waited, it would happen, but that would be boring. So, particularly where you saw H2SO4 being used as a catalyst, we used it with esterification, we made esters, okay? So sulfuric acid is your catalyst, so basically you would put the butane 2 ol add a little bit of sulfuric acid to it, bubble the chlorine gas through, and that'll give you the 2,3-dichlorobutane. Okay, so it's, a, substitu it's a, a substitution reaction. Okay, so this is a substitution reaction. Okay, so that's a really nice question. So Dombey, if your teacher gave you that question, I'm impressed because 
it really expects you to use a lot of what you need to know about organic, about organic um, chemistry, like what does butane 2 all look like? What does 2,3-dichlorobutane look like? What type of reaction is it? Is the sulfuric acid important or not? Those are all things you should know. And when it comes to studying organic, it's really, really important that you take all the reactions you know, and I like to tell my learners, and I really do believe this, if you really, really, really understand organic, you should be able to start with an alkane and make it into an alkene, into an alkyne, into a haloalkane, into, then change it again into a um, alcohol, into a carboxylic acid, into an ester, and do a whole flow chart with it. They love flow diagrams when it comes to reactions. Okay? Great. <gasps> Moving on. Now, this question, Chris, great question. Do you know what's really important about it? Is some of you have forgotten your grade 11 acids and bases. We only add a little bit into acids and bases in grade 12, okay? So the basics, the, the pure theory of acids and bases, you should have learned last year. All we add in this year is we add in how to calculate pHs, and we add in hydrolysis. In other words, with titrations, why do we choose the indicator that we choose? Not just, oh, well, learn it because that's what you were told to learn. Now, now you're going to be able to explain it, okay? So they tell us. 25 centimeters cubed, great, of a 0.2 mole per decimeter cubed, great. Nitric acid solution is titrated against 32,3 sodium carbonate solution. Assume complete dissociation. That's actually really important because without the complete dissociation, our equations get a little wonky and that just makes the math horrible. The equation for the reaction below is given. Now be careful here, grade 12s. If I wanted to make this a particularly nasty question, <laughs> I wouldn't give the equation. So my kids are all hoping I don't set their chemistry paper. <laughs> because you are expected, and hopefully you've been doing this since grade nine, you are expected to be able to write acid-based reactions. So you are expected to know that an acid, an acid, plus a carbonate, which is what this is. Okay, that's a carbonate, that says carb gives me a salt, carbon dioxide, and water. You must be able to do that, which means you must be able to write formulae, okay? But they gave you the reaction, yay. First thing we do is we check that it's balanced, and this one is. Generally speaking, if there's num coefficients, big numbers in it, it's balanced. Now they ask you, calculate the pH of the nitric acid solution. Okay, so pH, is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. So now you look at this and you go, oh, but I don't have H3O plus, but I have nitric acid. Now watch here. This is important. Nitric acid, when it dissolves in water, okay, essentially becomes H plus and NO3 minus. Okay, now that H plus is the H3O plus. I just haven't put the plus water. That's what I'd get if I had plus water. Okay, I'd get H3O plus. So, when you look at this, and this is now balanced, the concentration of my HNO3 is equal to the concentration of my H3O plus. That's the trick with this one. Now, right at the beginning of this, they said to me that my nitric acid was 0.2 moles. So, concentration of my, this is how I'd write it, of my H3O plus is equal to the concentration of my HNO3, which is equal to 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus concentration, and you know what? All we do is negative log times 0.2, okay? We put it into our calculator, so minus log 0.2 gives me 0, comma, what was it? 0, 0.6989, I'm going to make it 0, 0.69. 
nine. If you put 0, 0,7, that's fine. Look, that's fairly low. It means that the nitric acid is quite strong. <sighs> I think it's a little too low. Um, remember, the smaller the pH, the stronger the acid. The higher the pH, the stronger the base. We get such a low pH because what we're assuming is that we have 100% dissociation. So we're assuming that all the nitric acid dissolves and all the nitric acid molecules dissociate and become OH, uh, H3O plus and NO3 minus. Probably not what would happen in reality, but we're not going to make it more complicated than that for now. Okay, now we're definitely not going to have time to finish the next question. Okay. So for now, for now. Um, we're not finishing for the day. <laughs> yeah, we're not done. So I think maybe we have a little bit of a break and then we'll finish the question. No problem. I don't see any issues with that. But before we go on a quick air break, I just want to read a quick comment from Tulani Matonzi. And he says, what a great show by Tracy, my favorite teacher. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. <laughs> You're making me blush. <laughs> thank you so much, Tulani, for tuning in. And to everybody who is tuned in, thank you, guys. We appreciate all the love that we are receiving from you guys. But for now, go on and drink some water and come back after this quick ad. <laughs> 